Today we're going to do a 30 minute yin yoga for self compassion. Hi, I'm Melissa from Yoga with Melissa. For today's 30 minute yin yoga for self compassion, you're going to need a bolster, some blocks, an eye pillow, and a blanket. Before we start, I want to thank all of you who have helped us reach a recent milestone of 60,000 subscribers. Thank you so much. We really appreciate all of you who take the time to subscribe to our channel. I love hearing from you in the comments. It just warms my heart to see how much yoga is transforming your lives, healing you, and changing the lives of those that you touch each day. It's just incredible to see the power of yoga in your lives. So thank you for liking our videos, subscribing, for letting me know the impact that your yoga practice has in your lives in the comments. I truly appreciate it each and every day. We really appreciate each and every one of you. And doing each one of those things makes a huge difference to us and to other people too. So thank you so much for that. Uh, my intention for today's class is to support you in bringing self-compassion to your yoga practice, but also into your lives, and also to dispel the myth that self-compassion leads to laziness. So that's my intention. We're going to start with wide knee child's pose. All our poses are going to be held for five minutes today. If wide knee child's pose is uh, not agreeable to your knees and your ankles and your feet, then you can always lie on your back with wide knees to chest pose or put your feet against the wall with knees to chest. Those are great options if that's a better fit for your body. So as I said, my intention in this class is twofold to show how simple and easy it is to bring the qualities of self-compassion into our yin yoga practice and by extension into our lives and also to dispel the myth that self-compassion will lead to laziness. So we're going to start as always when we do a yin class with the principles of yin. The first thing we want to do is find an appropriate edge. And this is the first way that we can offer ourselves self-compassion, to be non-aggressive in our pose, to enter into our pose in a sensitive way and allow our breath to guide us. Too much intensity is going to affect the flow of chi. It's going to make it difficult to stay in the pose. And then once we've found that appropriate edge, we're going to soften. In the same with self-compassion, in our yin poses, we want to be offer ourselves tenderness to the shapes that we're taking. We want to offer ourselves a tenderness to the expression of our poses. And then we're going to be still in the same way that we don't want to deny our own suffering with self-compassion. We don't want to escape sensations or try to intensify them in our yin yoga postures. And finally, we stay for a while in this pose. We're staying for five minutes. There's nowhere to be, nowhere to go, nothing to get, nothing to do. So we can just let go of striving and doing and just be in our yin yoga po poses.
So take a deep breath in through your nose. And then we're going to find our way out of this pose. And we're going to lie on our back so we can feel the flow of chi, allow that rebound moving slowly between the poses. Okay, we're going to do a broken wing pose next, but if you would prefer to do a recline twist on your back, you can do that instead. So let me show you broken wing pose. You're gonna start on all fours. Walk your knees over to the right side of your mat. Slowly lower your left hip down to the ground and take your left arm out to the side. And you're going to lie down on your side of your left side of your head and you'll feel an opening through your left side of your chest. And you're gonna be here for five minutes as well. So you may be wondering, what is self-compassion? It involves three things. The first thing is to recognize our own suffering and to acknowledge that it exists. So when we're going through a hard time, to just pause and to notice that we're going through a hard time, that we're experiencing pain, whether it be physical pain or emotional pain or mental pain. And Number two, just to pause and allow ourselves to be moved by our own pain. And the third aspect of self-compassion that really allows us to drop into it is to remember that just like you, somebody else in this very moment is probably experiencing the same thing. So suffering is part of our human condition. Suffering is part of our human condition. So it's not sweeping our pain under the rug. We tend to think that we're the only one going through what we're going through. But it's pausing and just taking a moment to acknowledge our pain. And then taking that moment to have some compassion for a shared human experience.
Okay, so you're going to take a breath. And you're going to find your way out of this posture, making your way onto your back so you can allow the posture to become integrated and let the chi flow through your body. Okay, let's make our way over onto the other side. So you can bend your knees and roll to your side. There's always the option to take that reclined twist on your other side as well. So you're gonna start on all fours and this time you'll walk your knees to your left. Lower your right hips down to the ground and you're gonna take your right arm out to the side and then you're gonna lower your torso down. So I've got a shoulder on injury on this side, so I won't be doing this side with you. And you're gonna be in this pose for five minutes, just like you were on the other side. So just to reiterate that self-compassion is recognizing our own suffering, our own stress, our own tension, and acknowledging that it exists. So sometimes we don't even acknowledge that we have our own stress or we just try to push past it. And we pause and we allow ourselves to be moved by our own pain. And we just give ourselves time to deepen into the shared experience of our own our own pain, our own suffering, our own stress, so that we're not alone in it, that others, one of the mantras that we love is in our community is others feel this too. So whatever we're going through, we know that there's definitely some other person right now experiencing the same thing. And we can know that this stress, this suffering, this pain is part of our human condition. We're not alone in it. And it really helps to bring a tenderness, a kindness, a level of self-compassion to our experience. And it eliminates that criticism and that judgment from it. And just having these three simple things, the recognition, knowing that there is suffering, pausing and acknowledging it, and I want to use the word savoring, but just deepening into the shared experience of it softens the experience and is a really simple and easy and effective way to offer yourself compassion. So when you're in your yin pose, you can Practice offering yourself compassion for something that may be causing you suffering, whether it be physical pain, mental or emotional pain. Just recognizing your own suffering and pausing and allowing yourself to be moved by the pain that you're experiencing, whether it be physical, mental, or emotional. And then also just taking the time to remember that somebody just like you is also experiencing the same kind of physical, mental, or emotional anguish that you're experiencing right now. And there's a real tenderness that happens around the heart when you connect into that shared human experience of pain and suffering. When you don't feel so alone in it. It really softens the judgment and the criticism. And when we bring self-compassion to our practice, it 
creates a softness in the practice. If our practice is entirely centered around mindfulness, it can create a kind of harshness. It's a very uh, yang approach to mindfulness, whereas the compassion brings a very yin focus, a much more soft, a much more tender, a much softer approach to practice. So it balances it out. Take a breath. And slowly make your way onto your back to allow the chi to flow through your body. Okay, for the next pose, we're going to do a heart opening pose. I'm going to give you lots of options. This area tends to be quite tight for a lot of us because we spend a lot of time hunched over computers and for various reasons, injuries or whatever. So I want to give lots of options so we can layer on depending on the openness of your chest. Okay, so the first option is to go and get a blanket. And if your chest is really tight, like mine is right now, particularly because I have a shoulder injury, you can just do a very small roll. And it's a really good idea. This is part of offering yourself compassion, is to choose an appropriate edge. And you don't have to, it doesn't have to be big. This is even a really big roll. So for me, that would be too much. So I'm gonna show you, you can have a very small roll. A small heart, you know, the saying less is more, that can be really nice chest opener here. And you place it under your chest and you get some opening, okay? And you can be with that experience here. So it might be an interesting challenge if you always go for a really big experience of a posture to tune in yin, we're tuning into the subtle body. So you might want to try something less and see if you can tune into the subtle body, to the very fine energy of the subtle body here by doing less. But then I can give you options to have bigger heart openers here. But just know that that might not be the best expression for for you, so you wanna choose what's best for you and your body. So you can use a bolster here as well. Or you could use your blocks. And you can set up your blocks on, you know, whatever 
different variations you want. You can choose whatever variations you want. So you're going to choose what, whatever version you want. And you're going to be in it for five minutes. So we tend to think that if we're nice to ourselves, we're going to turn into lazy people. And this isn't something that I'm making up, it's something that I hear often from my own students. And it's something that the research backs up too, that comes up in the research again and again. And the truth is, as Kristen Neff, who is a researcher on self-compassion, she shows that Self-criticism, people believe if they criticize themselves, it's kind of a way to keep themselves going and keep themselves on track and keep them from be themselves from becoming lazy. And if they offer themselves self-compassion, they're just going to become lazy. But the research shows that it's actually not helpful at all. And it makes things worse for you. If you are critical of yourself, if you're judgmental of yourself, if you're pushing yourself, this actually doesn't work. It makes you feel inadequate and it makes you feel insecure. This is what the research shows. People who are studying, doing studies uh, at universities with loads of people, this is what the research shows. It makes you feel, it also makes you a more frustrated person. So when we offer ourselves compassion, it actually leads to more proactive behavior and it leads you to find ways to better your situation. It allows you to notice what's right and it gives you discernment to notice what's wrong as well so that you can orient towards joy. So it allows you to be discerning. So you find what's right, what's wrong about the situation, and then it allows you to make good choices to orient towards joy. And ultimately, self-compassion fosters happiness and optimism. So these are all the things that the research shows. And to me, those are good reasons to practice self-compassion.
Okay, so take a deep breath. And then you're going to remove your prop from underneath your chest. And you're going to make your way into your final resting pose. You can either take your blanket so that it, you pull it up over top of you. Your body could have cooled over time in this class. Or you can roll your blanket so it becomes a bolster and place it underneath your knees so you have a nice smooth flow of chi. You might want to take your eye pillow and place it over your eyes here. You're going to be in your Shavasana for five minutes here to receive your class, to receive the self-compassion, to allow the chi to flow. Okay, you can continue to rest back here. I'm going to sit up and read you a poem. This poem is called Self-Compassion. It's a poem that I wrote. Pull the second arrow from your heart, sweet one. When you judge your experience, there is no space for affection. Give yourself latitude to open to the warmth of your own brilliance, the way sunflowers lift their golden faces with positive regard toward the love. You yourself deserve the same unconditional friendliness you pour so freely into the roots of thirsty blossoms. This is the genuine intimacy within that will light your own radiant fire. Pull the second arrow from your heart, sweet one. When you judge your experience, there is no space for affection. Give yourself latitude to open to the warmth of your own brilliance. The way sunflowers lift their golden faces with positive regard toward the love. You yourself deserve the same unconditional friendliness you pour so freely into the roots of thirsty blossoms. This is the genuine intimacy within that will light your own radiant fire.
So gradually allow your breath to deepen. Wiggle your fingers and toes. I'm going to invite that movement back into your body and start to wiggle and stretch out. Bend your knees. I'm going to roll to your side and pause for a moment there before you come up to a seated position where we'll gather the fruits of our practice into ourselves first, offering ourselves compassion first, and then sending that fruits of our practice out into the world. Loka samasta sukino bhavantu Loka samasta sukino bhavantu Loka samasta sukino bhavantu May all beings be happy and free, and may the thoughts, words, and actions of my own life contribute in some way to the happiness and freedom for all. Thank you so much for liking this video, for subscribing to the channel, for sharing this video with your friends, and put, I'm pausing for my own pain in the comments. If you would like my series of videos for highly sensitive people, it's a series of special videos not available on YouTube. Uh, go to melissawest.com slash HSP and you can sign up for that special series. Also, it's just great to be on my mailing list because there are things that I offer sometimes in my newsletters that just aren't available on YouTube. And it's not always, you know, the YouTube algorithm and Facebook and Instagram don't always put me in front of you, even though you might be signed up to see my things, right? So if you're on my email list, it's guaranteed that I can... Uh, communicate with you. <laughs> so um, yes, that's it for today. I'm sending you much love from beautiful British Columbia. May your joy be as deep as our Pacific Ocean. May you be as rooted as the old growth trees in our forests. May you be as strong as our mountains. Om Shanti. Namaste.